This is NBA's replay in the Brandenburg B, the Brandenburg Black. Um, it's a tier eight German battleship, has the best secondary suite in the game at tier eight. Um, so she's kind of fun there. Um, I believe she does have torpedoes as well. Yes. 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 The typical German six kilometer. She's got what we like to, what Wargaming likes to do is they take uh, German battleships, they put them out, and they down tier the main guns. So these are 305 millimeter guns, whereas, say, Bismarck, for example, is 380 millimeter. That does have an impact over AP pen and overmatch, et cetera, et cetera. So Brandenburg is great when she's top tier. When she's bottom tier or even middle tier, oftentimes you find you want to spam HE more than anything else. Did I miss anything, gents? No. No, and this is a middle tier game. Okay. So let's take a look at your build. Um, you are bringing with you main armaments mod one, which is great for keeping your torpedoes alive. Alternately, you could go main, or sorry, auxiliary armaments to keep your secondaries alive. I would probably go for auxiliary mod over AR main now. armaments. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you've got damage control mod one, secondaries, damage control mod two, and concealment, fine. Um, spotting aircraft is good. This is only a 10 point captain. What kind of captain are we talking about? Is it a special one? It is Luch yeah, it is Luch Luchens. What are you doing with the 10 point loot yens? Get him up to 21. I was ASAP. just training him. I was training him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alright, fair enough. So loot yens is great because loot yens does have a buff preventative maintenance that helps to keep your torpedoes from being incapacitated. And then preventative maintenance itself was buffed recently with secondary and anti air survivability. You went into Grease the Gears for turret traverse, and then adrenaline rush, and then manual secondaries. Okay. I would not have gone this route. Personally, I might have dropped Adrenaline Rush first, instead gone for long range secondaries, and, and then gone secondary battery. Do I want to go for Grease the... I probably wouldn't even go Grease the Gears first. I might instead go for Party Target first. But yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I understand you get the buff there. But I might go for something like this, just to get an idea of where the enemies uh how many enemies are shooting me so it's a little bit of survivability there and then also your secondary is getting you a, a little bit um out there um and then after your 10 points are completed your next points most likely you've got a choice you could go for some more survivability stuff like maybe these two skills would be good i don't know that per that concealment is as important as the other two survivability skills Adrenaline Rush is absolutely a good skill, and boom, now you're done. Okay. That's how I might do it. That, turret that Traverse is nice, but... Was... And they're small turrets, so they do turn pretty quick. I'd say Turret Traverse... I mean... Yeah. Turret Traverse is handy if you find yourself constantly flipping sides. If you don't, then then, then you don't need it. Right. So. Got, gotcha. Uh, for Signal Flags, you've got anti debt. Uh, fire chance, secondary boost, and speed. Concealment is good. Heal is good. Uh, right here, the fire reduction is good. Flood reduction is useful. Even ramming is nice. Yeah, so, I was kind of broke. I was kind of broke at the time and out of flags. So that's okay. Is demo expert good for a secondary build? So demo expert gives you one extra percent chance of HE shells hitting. Most people, if they want that 1%, you can easily make up for that in your flags. But take a look at your secondary battery here. Your secondary battery, your fire chance is 6% on the one. And then on the next one, your fire chance is 9%. What a lot of people will do, Alvimen, is they will take, especially if this is on uh, the Schlieffen line, they'll take Demolition Expert. Or sorry, not them. Uh, IFHE. Now IFHE reduces the the chance of causing fire by half. So you've gone from six percent to three and a half percent. You've gone from nine percent to five percent, and that's where a lot of people will go demo expert because that extra one percent is a huge buff. Fifty one percent on a salvo to sixty percent comes in really handy. Um, 
So if you're going to go for IFHE for the extra penetration, then yes, it's worth it. If you're not going IFHE, it's not. Now, your 105s, you can see, will only penetrate 36 millimeter. Um, and, and so 26 millimeter just isn't enough. You generally, your, your bread and butter is at 32 millimeter of pen. You want to make sure you're penning that. Your 150s will pen 38 automatically with IFHE. Those 150s pen 47. That doesn't get you too much. It gets you American Battleship deck armor and a few other things here and there. But the, rea but the real thing is those 105s penetrating 32. Now you've got Lutians on Schlieffen. You absolutely want to have IFHE and you absolutely want Demolition Expert if you're going to put Lutians on a Schlieffen. And, and they just melt all the things, okay? All right. I think, thanks for the questions. I think we have covered uh, your build. So let's go ahead and take a look at the replay and how this works out. You said there is a death pick, so we won't worry about taking a screenshot at the start. What's up, Gino? NBA, you are indeed middle tier, although there's only two tier nines. It's not that big of a deal. Please walk us through your line of thought here at the start of this game, because you're in the middle of the map. What are you going to do? Uh, uh, go towards... Hold on. Oh, shit. Hold on. Now, now, let's try to keep the gamer words out of voice. Good luck and My bad. You're going to A. Yeah, I figured I was gonna go help the the other battleships out because I've always had we've been really good at, on that side of the map. Okay. On, yeah, I mean, just pushing. Yep. So if I you feel the, comfortable, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I mean, the, I, was, I had the palm going with me. I was gonna go help help out their palmerin, but mm -hmm. you'll see later. <laughs> so comfort on a side of the map is very important. If you feel comfortable there, then fine be there if you don't then go someplace else that's one thing the other thing is going to a you've got a palmer and a key already heading that way there are five battleships now three of those battleships are going to a the important thing to look at is your destroyers you have a z31 and you have an oland a z31 is already noped out of this uh, out of that side of the map and matter of fact he's going all the way to sea cap you have zero vision going this way. If yeah, that's a Gajamada, yeah. that is a problem. Uh, secondary range, it's on the mod right here, Imeos, 9.6 kilometer. You think your biggest problem with Schlieffen gains is that you rush into secondary range too fast. Yeah, you gotta take your time, and then when you deploy yourself in the Schlieffen, there's no undeploying. Yeah, I don't just totally YOLO in, in this, but you'll see. It doesn't I matter. I right. what I'm what I'm trying to say is either way, you've got zero vision on the side, and that's because of the Z thirty one. So I would be yelling at the Z thirty one to get back over to, to at least B. But you didn't. And now three battleships. I don't like yelling at players. I don't, I just, I don't. Fair enough. So you've got three battleships that are on one flank that have zero spotting. Like that's not gonna be good for you. You know no, what I'm saying? Like, I can already yeah. see this is going to be a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a problem. Now, you've got AP in the barrels. There's a lot of cruisers. I can see that. Uh, Battleship-wise... If you want to shoot battleships and destroyers early, I'd have HE in the barrels. I don't think you're going to get a, a magic shot on a cruiser at the start. Hey, Beret 87. Now, your Pomerant is stopping. And I don't think that he's used Hydro yet. Here's where AP, HE would have been a better choice than AP. Um, even if you had just waited just a second, look at this. Musashi appears broadside to you. Oof. And Hipper, too. So, you're going to go hard into A now. You're going to charge. No, I'm waiting for my Pomerant to charge. Okay. I'm a is not down. being, a is being contested. 
So that should immediately tell you that something is in A that can contest. That's an Akizuki or that's the Gajamata. You've got no vision of who they are. I would put the plane up. You might get lucky and spot the, the destroyer. You turning back in the way that you're turning right now towards the Palmer is putting you at greater risk to torpedoes. It's also making it easier for whatever destroyer is spotting you right now at A to dump all the torpedoes on you because you're making a smaller target. He just has, a, has to target uh, you and the Palmer. The Colonel Baloney, well, he's going to get himself killed pretty quick. And you said you're waiting for the... For the Okay, there's the Gaja. This is what you did not want to see in front of you. I would be turning hard to the right to get out of the way of torpedoes because you know these deep waters are coming your way. I think he already spent them somewhere else because I don't think he threw them. That build could be wrong. I mean, it's, it's I'm just, just saying. Shooting AP at this massage and just start burning them. Absolutely. HE against battleships, always. Unless you're up really close. Hey, look, BIA, buddy. He dumped his deep waters at the Colonel Baloney. Now's when you've got a double W. W into him. Like, yeah, we are. W yeah, into I have, him I have, or W away? I am. We're, we're double Wing in. Okay, there's the Gaja. He's spotted. That's on the uh, Pomeran's Hydro. Again with the AP, but HE would be better here. Are you scrolling? He is a scroller. Yes. Yeah, I'm a scroller. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working. You love deep water. Um, one hit. Go to menu. Disable your scroll. Disable your scroll. You can't. You cannot disable scroll. All right. Then I just put it, remove I put, the mouse button. I've. Just sim simply just break your scroll wheel. Mm -hmm. I'm not breaking my mouse. I'm get not. Mouse uh, scroll wheel. Remap your zoom to the scroll wheel, so you automatically zoom in. <laughs> um, get one of those Apple mouses that only has one button then. Problem solved. Oh, there you go. Yeah, well, I can do that. Thank God your secondaries aren't scrolling. So the reason why we're talking about scroll zooming is because it does have an impact on your overall reaction speed. And um, it can it's... come in handy when you're trying to dodge Whoa. torpedoes and stuff. More importantly, if you're going to scroll, scroll all the way out because you're killing your field of view. That's true. Not to mention, you're taking longer to adjust every time you zoom in and zoom out. Well, and that's what I mean about decreasing your speed. All right, you're coming out broadside to an Amagi. Hipper, I'd shoot the Hipper. Uh, Forget the Amagi right now. Also, Amagi's did you got just fire from this far away? Did what? You fired your torps from like five kilometers. Yep, you don't want to fire them from the onset of engagement. You want to, especially if they uh commit to charging you that's when you pop your torpedoes on them but you've got a hipper that's broadside to you right now and you're completely ignoring him because of this amagi oh and look there's a rune that you didn't even know existed because you're scroll zooming and didn't see with the field view also a amagi lift no he died now i got him yeah that is why you want to hold on to your torps so you get closer mm -hmm. enemies have a habit of dodging but now, by the time you're able to shoot this hipper, he's already not, you know, you, you, you're the only threat to him. So he's already going to turn away from you. Yep. Good job uh, running away from that. You don't want to get in hipper's uh, torpedo range. No, no, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's six kilometer. Plus, you got the Musashi that's playing goalie over there. Unfortunately, right now, you're sitting bro- Oh, he just smacked you. You're sitting broadside to that, so that's a problem. You got a Richelieu coming in, so now you can absolutely just turn straight after- the I would turn straight into the Richelieu. Keep your bow towards the Musashi, and just charge the Richelieu. What's the Richelieu gonna do about you? Die. He doesn't do much. He doesn't do no, much. He's gonna die. Yeah, shift is your go-to. It took a while for me to learn. So, turning hard like this- you're, you're kind of turning broadside to the Musashi again. Musashi, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. That is bad. Got it. Also, uh, turning like this, you'll note that your rear turrets are also taking forever to turn again. Um, why did you turn to the left of Rishalu? I thought you would just thread the needle between both Rishalu and Musashi. And that's what I was exactly saying. Exactly, yes. You, what you, range? Have to the you have to go in between both of them so both sides can go off. 
You yes. want those secondaries firing on both sides because it looks glorious and you can torpedo both sides too. What range to use AP versus battleships on Sleafen? It really depends on the battleship and the angling and stuff. So I can't give you a concrete answer. But generally... Range is, range is not really that important. Yeah, you're using AP most of the time in your main barrels. Also, he need me healing like 10 seconds ago. A little bit of a delay in the heal could cause you to die earlier. Now the zooming here, zooming in, zooming out, zooming in, zooming out. I know, I know. You, you can't even tell where your where your hull is. Now I've got a mod that tells me, but you probably aren't running that mod, right? Uh, no. So how do you know what your angle is to this Richelieu right now? Oh yeah, you are no, very... I have the same mod you do, but okay. it's not center. Yeah, it's not. I'm, I'm just saying because you're very very flat to him. As a matter of fact, you just took a bunch of hits right there. Wow, you got the kill, but barely with the skin of your teeth at 1,709 hit points. Boise, forget the Musashi down there. Focus on the Boise and the Atlanta. Focus on living for the next minute. Well, that as well. I do love the next minute. Kind of save the shit talking for later when you're done with the game. Next. Now this turn I mean, might get you so beached. You're so lucky that Boise ignored you. Beach. Well, and he has like 15 other things yeah, to worry about. The shore's right in front of him, yeah. That is a Kraken. That's a good point, Durant. Yes. Now here's where that little delay in using your heal comes in important. You could be healing about right now. Uh, instead, you have to wait another 10 seconds. I mean, also here's that, the thing, he may have a Kraken, but he doesn't have any HP left. That's right. rare for out Musashi that he's going to have to probably YOLO. It, it, this is like your team is going to lose seeing just ship a cow or ship numerical advantage up there. It's hilarious the fact that both destroyers went to sea and then both destroyers are dead. Well, Average I mean, to be, for a moment. Yes. to be fair, their DDs are dead too. Mm -hmm. Another average destroyer moment. Yep. Is that, did you check your messages? Nope. Uh, that is, I like uh, what you're trying to do. But you mm -hmm. also want to wait a second just to see, you saw the island indicator to come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It takes about a second for it to show up, so just kind of keep that in mind when you're trying to shoot over islands. Right. Got it. Got it. You're down one ship, you're down on points. You had a game with GK, no destroyers, no CV, no sub, any team at three sleep and div. You pushed to the same cap, the amount of shells was glorious, I can imagine. Alright, so you're committing now to this charge on the Musashi. Yeah, I was trying to help out our other battleship right there. Your key I mean, that's almost dead, or your shores that's almost dead? I mean, he's got to turn his 1v1 into a 2v1. Mm -hmm. That's what I was he's trying to do. Win. <laughs> huh? Wait. Uh, no. Get, get as close as possible. You need a. You're going to rush him. Okay. You have to forget this thing has torpedoes until something's three kilometers from you. Yep. And by the way, you slowing down here just gives your key more time to be shot at by the Musashi, which kind of negates what you were just saying about trying to turn this into 2v1 and can keep your teammate alive. Yeah, I think the better play was to actually just use that island, get as close to Musashi as possible, then jump scare him and get a shot onto his broadside. You're Musashi does kill kilometer. the key. Like, there's a huge difference between being at 6 kilometers and then being at 3. Masashi did not know you're back here. Right. Also, heal. Heal would be nice. You're not going to use it. You're going to die with the heal available. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Why did you die with that heal available? Because you were too busy trying to get your torpedoes on target. The proper play would have been to bow in straight at that Musashi, come around that corner, completely surprise him, surprise him like SAT said, jump scare him. And then what you do... I'm gonna I'm gonna pull back for a second with my camera. I want to show you how this works. Okay, so what you do 
is you come around like this. You come bow in to the Musashi. Musashi has to decide how does he want to take this engagement. He's too busy looking at the uh, key. You keep on smacking. Right about here, look, now I'm at 1.5 kilometer away. If that Musashi keeps moving forward, all you have to do is wait until he fires, turn to your left like this with your ship, and then you fire your torpedoes to the right side. Got it. That's how that yeah. works. With you firing Stop. your torpedoes at max range, you had to show a lot of side in order to fire them, and he just dumped a bunch of shells into you and got full pens. Well, I think more importantly, the the waiting, the, the, the slow down, you, you yeah. have to go while he's engaged in somebody else. Because right. you know his guns are looking that way. Once that ship in front of him dies, he's probably going to remember you were in that area and it's going to start looking that way. Exactly. Got it, got it, got it. So yep. another thing is if he got next to that island and then turned out, first, Musashi has one of the slowest turret traverse in the game. He can't turn his guns in time. Second, you're about maybe three kilometers away from him, so more of your AP shells will hit his broadside. So combine that with your torps, you can actually just about death strike him. Yes. Okay. Like what? you saw, he only hit one citadel in like one or two citadels in that salvo. You could have landed five or six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think more importantly, when when you were fighting that Russia, just go at the Masashi. The Masashi wouldn't like this whole engagement never would have happened because you would have killed mm -hmm. him. And that's oh, okay. what I was talking about. You just W at the Musashi, you bounce everything anyway, or most of the things, and you don't care about the Richelieu. Eventually, you'll kill the Richelieu anyway with Torps, secondaries, main guns. And then, when that's done, you just lazily turn your attention to the Musashi and kill it. Okay. I'll show you oh, on the replay yeah. render. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm sure you still felt good about this game. You came in first place at, by almost 500 base XP higher than your second place um so i mean hey that's like, fun yeah right no, no 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 i got that but could we have won the game could i have won the game yes yeah i mean i could i could have killed the masashi right but yes and the richelieu but yes but i can't do i can't do what i can't help what's on the other flank you but can't I, flank. I mean what well how did the key die think of uh, it this way died if... to the masashi right right mm -hmm. like you can't control what the key does but him being alive is now another ship that you can use its HP pool while you're mm -hmm. shooting other things. Right. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Yeah, As Falcon this says, way. this is a great replay because it's a good learning opportunity. Cheers, dude. That's exactly. why. That's why it's in these end. So. Mm -hmm. I mean. <laughs> yeah. So if I, just, if I just send in perfect games, then we'll still find problems. <laughs> we'll still find problems. Yeah, but <laughs> that's what we do. But I, I, I mean, this display. is good learning stuff. Like. What people, when they ask these questions, it's usually at near the end of the game where there's not, not much you can do regardless. Right. However, it's kind of at the mid game or so that a lot of your what you're doing can inf uh, can influence the match later on. Think of it yes. as a snowball effect. The earlier yes. you start making impact, the uh, the more results you'll see later in the game. Right. So in this case, like you did a pretty good job but your hp trades were not very efficient mm -hmm. so I'm... yeah let's say you take that key and with half health and you had about maybe 30 40 percent health going into the late game against those three ships you actually had a decent chance these are tier mm -hmm. seven cruisers that survived okay yep so first of all he in the barrels to start at the onset engagement you're probably not going to death strike it a cruiser that's the only reason to have ap in the barrels there weren't that many cruisers in the game anyways i would have you ready the second yeah. take a look i paused it here in the replay render for a reason because right about here is when you decide to turn in and slow down when you turn into the palmer i want you to imagine if you're the gajamata that's on the opposite side of this cap i mean Honestly, he's just going to get excited and get wood because what are you doing? You're turning into the exact same position as the Pomeran and as your cruiser buddy. And so it makes it even easier for him. It's a more target rich environment. Honestly, the best thing for you to do when you're detected and you know you're near stuff is think, who's the Gajamata going to torpedo? I would expect him to torpedo the Pomeran because he's the closest battleship. 
In which case, I would turn hard right to try to get to, like, say, Hotel 1 or 2, and then turn back in. You do a zigzag. When you do a zigzag, you force the gacha to split his torps or split his opinion on where to fire his torpedoes. It didn't matter this game. I just want to put that in your mind at the outset of the engagement. Okay. Gaja torps are are seven? I thought they were longer range than that. Anyway, either way. Yeah, I mean, yeah they're, yeah, they're short. They're not very long. Even if it's, let's say it's a Jaeger or something, you, you see that it's 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 just kind of a torpedo destroyer. Like, how do you how do you you know you gotta play the enemy person and what they're doing? So let's continue the replay render. Here's the part where you turn in again. Like I said, if the Gacha dumped deep water torpedoes there, oh my goodness, that could have been catastrophic for you, the Palmer, the Colonel Baloney. He didn't. He deep water torped the Colonel Baloney, and the Baloney dies. Whatever. Now you are one big happy fleet, all working together. And then the Amagi appears. Now right about here, and I think this is also part of the constant zoom in, zoom out, you become tunnel visioned on the Amagi. He's a battleship, you must assert your dominance, he's the closest target. But frankly, the Hipper is your biggest, your, your bigger target. Get him off the board. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, more importantly, your food is cruisers. Exactly. Right. Go after your food. The Amagi is going to die in torpedo. You, you do have... Look, it's you and a Palmer, and so literally you guys can just cross torp. It was a Palmer. That Palmer died super early, so... He did. He did. He YOLO'd in. The Amagi got in there, Richelieu and all that, oh. but... You know, I'd expect the Palmer to use his torpedoes on the Amagi, etc., to the point where you focusing Amagi is overkill. Okay. So get the cruiser out. Get him out of the out of the game. Then you can go back to Amagi and focus on if he's still alive. And if he's still alive, by the time that cruiser is dead, guess what? He's still in secondary range. Your secondaries are still ripping into him. So now, you know, you can kind of take your time. Here's the part where what you do is you set your course directly at the Musashi. You Han Solo YOLO charge the Musashi. Keep your guns on the Richelieu till the Richelieu dies. You pen 32mm armor with all your secondaries. You should have torpedoes available by the time you get within range. Again, as Putin said, 3 km. Take your torpedo range, divide it by half. That's your effective torpedo range. So 3 okay. km, not 6, 3. You get into three kilometer, dump your torps, Richelieu dies, and now you're in position to smack the Musashi. Because if you do that right here, I'm going to pause it right here. Here's the part where you're going to turn away. If you kept going straight at the Musashi, the Richelieu would die and you would be one grid square from the Musashi. You'd almost be in torpedo range to use your other torpedoes. You just lazily turn your torpedoes, your turrets, and you kill the Musashi. Or ram him. Yeah, if you have to. Rune dies. Right here. Musashi wisely shoots at you because you're giving him a broadside. Shoots at you again. You do manage to kill that uh, other Richelieu, but it's a Richelieu. He doesn't really matter. You beach just so you can get that kill on the Rune, or whatever it was. And you've got a full health Musashi that now is charging a key and a Hindenburg that or Brandenburg that are both quite low on HP. Here's your last chance to do it. You've got to go straight at this Musashi. The Musashi made a big mistake. He is moving full forward at full W. Right. Now, I got a question right here. Yes. Should I have gone around the island? Could I have no. gone around the island? Okay. No. no. Way too okay. much time. Way okay. too much time. You need to get in there now. If you want to save this key... The play is to get in there now. You want the Musashi to shoot you because you've got the armor to tank those shells. The, the key doesn't. Okay. Especially because a lot of Musashi players, a lot of battleship players in general, aim too low at, at the bow and stuff, and those shells will, will bounce. By the time you come out of this corner, it's too late. The key is already dead. 
You went broadside to get your torpedoes off. The Musashi just laughed, salivated, and fired. You got your torpedo hits into the Musashi, but you didn't get the kill. And that's game. Yep. I think there's a confidence thing here, too. The way that you're playing, it feels like you're very... You're not very confident in your own gameplay. The, the beginning, when you felt like you needed to turn in and be with the, the Pomeran to work together for his Hydro or whatever, and then later, twice, you turned away from that Musashi. Twice. If I'm that Musashi player, I'm looking at you, I'm like, ah, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Boom. Most of the time you want to shoot broadside cruiser from close range. It might be explosive citadel damage. Yes, that's very true. Exactly, Seba. Yes. Hey, no, no, I just got I just got tunnel visioned. I mean, that's mm -hmm. uh, yeah. midnight in Germany. No, no worries, Blue Falcon. Thank you for being here. Thanks for being part of the stream. And that's why if you watch me when I play my grind assist portion of the stream, when I fire my guns, I instinctively hit the right mouse button right away. And the right mouse button immediately zooms me out fully. I can see my ship and I can look around and see what else is going on. I'm looking for other targets. I'm looking for threats on me. I'm looking at my teammates. And that's what happens when I zoom out fully like that. When you're constantly zooming in and out with your, with your scroll zoom, what you're doing is you're focusing only on that one target. You're not looking at the big picture. You're not looking at who can smack you. You're not looking at who else you could smack yourself. The difficult habit to get out of. Any other uh, questions? Anything else that we can answer for you? Uh, nope. What are we going to call this replay, guys? Hmm. I don't, know. I don't know. Maybe tunnel vision. Tunnel vision? Yeah. There's tunnel vision. There's scroll zoom. There's um, confidence. I think tunnel vision works. Well, confidence is shorter. NBA, what do you think? Uh, tunnel vision. Okay. Tunnel vision it is. It's your replay, so you might as well, re you might as well title it, you know? <laughs> right. All right. Well, hey, thank you for sending that one in. I mean, that's a that's a really good learning opportunity for everybody. So that's awesome.